Since the dawn of antiquity, man has found it necessary to occasionally conjure up mythical creatures in an effort to explain all of the otherwise unexplainable maladies and unfortunate turns of events that has befallen him. In more recent times, however, one of these creatures has managed to manifest itself metaphysically and has literally taken to trying to uproot society from the inside. To this day he stalks the halls of the United States Senate and occasionally pretends at being a senator himself and taking to questioning potential persons who would seek to alleviate some of our problems of late. This particular creature is made distinct by three ancestral lineages to three particular races of creature. He is, consequently, half gnome, half goblin, and half leprechaun. Thus, we shall refer to him, for purposes of our understanding, as goblin gnome leprechaun, and we shall see what sort of questions he has for us today. Senator Rubio. Welcome, Mr. Tillerson. Do you believe during the 2016 presidential campaign, Russian intelligence services directed a campaign of active measures involving the hacking of emails, the strategic leak of these emails, the use of internet trolls, and the dissemination of fake news with the goal of denigrating a presidential candidate and also undermining faith in our election process? No, I do not believe that that took place. I think that Hillary Clinton lost the election all on her own. And for the record, I think that you losing your home state to my future employer in the GOP primary was nobody's fault but yours. Get over it. Uh, based on your knowledge of Russian leaders and Russian politics, do you believe these activities could have happened without the knowledge and the consent of Vladimir Putin? Well, if we're speaking hypothetically, then I would say yes, Putin would have been aware of it and would have consented to it, since after all, he seems to have a bit more control over his intelligence agencies than we seem to of our own. You've engaged you. in significant business activities in Russia, so I'm sure you're aware that very few things of a major proportion happen in that country without Vladimir Putin's permission. So I ask, based on your views of Russian politics and your experience, is it possible for something like this involving the United States elections to have happened without Vladimir Putin knowing about it and, uh, and, and authorizing it. Oh, Senator, forgive my boldness, but uh, why would you assume that I would give a different answer if you simply reworded the same question and added a more badgering tone to it? If Congress passed a bill imposing mandatory visa bans and asset freeze sanctions on persons who engage in significant activities undermining the cybersecurity of public or private infrastructure and democratic institutions in the United States. Would you advise the president to sign it? If that had been proven to have happened and we knew the person's responsible, then absolutely. If, on the other hand, the president decided to overreact before all the facts were in and simply tossed out every single diplomat of another world superpower that could be formidable on the battlefield, I would advise the president to get some serious psychotherapy, and I might also want to inquire whether you've considered this route uh, also, Senator, given the road that you're currently going down. So no matter where so, they come from, if they come from Belgium, if they come from France, I don't, if someone is conducting cyber attacks against the United States and we pass a law that authorizes the president to sanction them or actually imposes these sanctions as mandatory, would you advise the president sign it? No, I would not advise him to sign it, Senator, because you see the executive branch is the one that is responsible for dealing with diplomats and the Congress has very little to say on the matter and for good reason. The president is the chief diplomat, so this prerogative falls to him. I would also like to further add, Senator, that if other countries were consistently doing as you suggest, Given our espionage efforts and our continual meddling in other elections, we would scarcely have diplomats in any countries other than our own. So, Mr. Tilson, I understand your testimony. You're saying it was mandatory. You would not be able to advise the president to sign it because you want to have the president have the flexibility to decide which countries to sanction and which ones to not sanction. Under which circumstances to sanction? In essence, because you want to be able, for example, to take other things into account, like, for example, the desire to perhaps improve relations with that country, 
uh, and therefore the president maybe doesn't want to sanction them even though they're attacking us. No, Senator, actually it would be more along the lines that the president would probably not want to be held hostage by the irrational whims of a petulant child in a middle-aged man's body who wants to play chicken with a nuclear power simply because of what happened to his family at the hands of Fidel Castro. That's more what it's like. Well, again, I mean, what's troubling about your answer is, is the implication that somehow if there is some country that uh, we're trying to improve relations with or have significant economic ties with, the president, you may advise the president not to uh, impose sanctions on that country, on individuals in that country, out of concern that it could da damage our, our, the rest of our relationship with them on a cyber attack, which is a direct attack on our national security and our electoral process. So let me ask you, would you advise the president-elect to repeal the Obama administration's recent executive orders regarding cybersecurity and Russian interference in the 2016 elections? Actually, Senator, I would take it a step further, and on top of rescinding all of Barack Obama's harebrained executive orders and inviting Russian diplomats back into this country, I would actually force former President Barack Obama to write a letter of apology to the Russian government uh, for accusing them of something without ample evidence to back up the accusation. But Mr. Tilton, I understand the cybersecurity plan. We have to have one to protect ourselves and handle cyber attacks against our country. That is separate from the question of whether people that have already conducted attacks should be sanctioned and singled out. There's an executive order that is now active uh, that has sanctioned those individuals. And my question is, do you believe that executive order should be repealed by the incoming president? Yes, Senator, because the individuals that were sanctioned were not proven to have been involved in any sort of an attempt to meddle with the American election. And for the record, Senator, I wonder why it is you have that little R next to your name down there, because you're sure talking like a Hillary Clinton supporter right now. Is Vladimir Putin a war criminal? No. Do you really want to go there, Senator? Well, let me describe the situation in Aleppo, and perhaps that will help you reach that conclusion. Uh, in Aleppo, Mr. Putin has directed his military to conduct a devastating campaign. He's targeted schools, markets, not just assisted the Syrians in doing it. His military has targeted schools and markets and other civilian infrastructure. It's resulted in the death of thousands of civilians. No, I was actually not aware of that, Senator. I was aware of the fact that several prominent terrorist groups, many of them Al-Qaeda affiliates, had coalesced in that area and were using it as a staging ground to launch attacks against Syria's government and also to murder Christians in cold blood, and that because of Putin's actions in concert with the Syrian government, though heavy-handed they were, is the reason why Christians can now openly worship in Aleppo for the first time in about five years. That is what I am aware of, Senator, and if I may be so bold, I must say that your condescending tone and your information are pure bullshit. And what's publicly in the record about what's happened in Aleppo and the Russian military, you are still not prepared to say that Vladimir Putin and his military have violated the rules of war and have conducted war crimes in Aleppo. No, Senator, I would not refer to him as a war criminal because everything that you have laid out for me is wholly conjecture. And uh, not only that, but also if we were to call him a war criminal, we would have to lay a similar charge at you, given the things that you have supported over the course of the past six years. Like this. Mr. Chilterson, the uh, happened in Aleppo is be, in the public domain. The videos public, and the pictures are there. Fully informed. I would ask the senator if he would kindly shut the fuck up so I can actually answer his questions. There is so much of it. There is so much information out there about what's happened in Aleppo, leaving the Chechen issue aside. What happened there is clearly documented as well. There's so much information out there. It should not be hard to say that Vladimir Putin's military has conducted war crimes in Aleppo because it is never acceptable, you would agree, 
for a military to specifically target civilians, which is what's happened there through the Russian military. And uh, you know, I find it discouraging, your inability to, to cite that, uh, which I think is globally accepted. Uh, no, actually, Senator. Most of the information that you've cited comes from highly questionable sources that are not on the ground at present. And thus, I would have to conclude that the scenario that you have presented here is false and that you yourself, Senator, are a liar. I want to, in my last minute and a half here, move really quickly to an additional question. In fact, I want to enter two things into the record, Mr. Chairman, without objection. Without objection. The first is a partial list of political dissidents, journalists, and critics of Vladimir Putin who were suspiciously murdered or died under highly suspicious circumstances. The second thing I want to enter into the record is a letter uh, addressed to this committee uh, by Vladimir Karza Morza, who himself was mysteriously poisoned and is an opponent of the Putin regime. I'd like to enter that into the record. Without objection. Uh, Mr. Tillerson, do you believe uh, that Vladimir Putin and his cronies are responsible for ordering the murder of countless dissidents, journalists, and political opponents. Senator, I apologize, but I'm going to need some clarification on this question. Are you asking me that Vladimir Putin and his government are the Clintons, or are you asking me if they're Abraham Lincoln? Are you aware that people who oppose Vladimir Putin wind up dead all over the world, poisoned, shot in the back of the head, and uh, do you think that was coincidental, or do you think that it is quite possible, or likely, as I believe, that they were part of an effort to murder his political opponents? Oh, I'm sorry, Senator. I think I misunderstood the question. Uh, what you're actually asking is uh, Vladimir Putin's government, uh, the papacy. Publicly reported. None of this is classified, Mr. Tillerson. These people are dead. Yes, Senator, I actually heard you the first time on that one. You know, there's a curious thing that happens both in war and in political intrigues, and that is that people die. Uh, war and politics are hell. Uh, if you have a problem with that, maybe you should take it up with the devil. Question was, your question was people who were directly responsible for that. I'm Sen not disputing these people are dead. Senator Menendez. 